Welcome! This is the second video on writing a parser for a compiler. In our first video, we looked at using finite state machines to recognize words and numbers in input string. In this video, we'll be writing source code that allows us to use the regular expression syntax to automatically generate this finite state machine. This automatically generated finite state machine will enable us to be able to recognize far more complex identifiers and number formats in our string. The main class of our program will be regex. This has a parse method that will do most of the work of our program. It will take an input string and in regular expression syntax and return a pointer to a new regex object. The reason for returning a pointer is because our input string might not be a valid regular expression, in which case a null pointer is returned. Our regex object will have an array of finite states, which were defined in the previous video. It is these states that we'll move between as we're reading characters from our input string in order to match the pattern defined in our regular expression syntax. Our parse function will be a recursive descent parser that will go through our input and return a set of finite states. Each of our parse functions will have the same signature. They'll take the input and return a new finite state. In addition to the state, they will also return any unconnected outputs from our newly created states. These outputs will be connected later in the previous calling function. The first parse function we'll write is that of the smallest unit of our syntax, a single letter. We'll create a new state and then add an output to that state looking for that letter. We'll return the state and add the newly created output to the resulting vector of outputs that are to be connected later. Our input parse needs to support more than just a single letter. Our parse terminal function will continually read letters from the input syntax, all the while keeping track of the inputs and outputs of the previous letter. When a new letter is found, the previously unconnected outputs are now connected to the state associated with the next letter. When no more letters are found, this function will now return the state associated with the first letter in the input syntax. We have already written enough of our recursive descent parser to perform simple test case. Let's go ahead and improve our parse method to now use our parse terminal method. We'll pass it our input syntax and keep track of all the outputs created from the parsing. We'll set the target of those unconnected outputs to our accept state that was passed into parse. We'll set the start state of our regular expression as the state return from parsing of the input. Let's go ahead and build a simple test case. We will parse the input string ABC. This will return back a regex object that contains a collection of finite states. And as in the previous video, we can now run scan from the start state and see that we've matched our input pattern of ABC. We can now programmatically generate a finite state machine. However, our syntax is so limited, all we can really do is look for a string. Let's go ahead and extend our syntax to look for repeated letters. In this case, after reading each letter, we'll look for one of three different characters, a plus sign, a star, or a question mark. Based on that character, we'll then look for a number of repeated elements of the previously read letter. If we notice any one of these three characters, we'll immediately create a new state. This new state will have two outputs, one of which will immediately connect to the finite state associated with the previous letter. The other output will remain unconnected and add it to the list of outputs that are to be connected later by the calling function. For the plus symbol, this will correspond to expecting to match one or more of the previous letters. To achieve this, we will connect all of the outputs from the previous finite state associated with the letter to this new state, and then return the finite state 
associated with this letter. This makes sense as we expect to see one of these letters and therefore the first state in the sequence should be the one associated with the letter. The star will correspond to zero more of the previous letters. Similar to before, we will connect all of the outputs from the finite state associated with the letter to this new state. However, different this time, we would just return this new finite state and not the finite state associated with the letter. That's because the letter is now effectively optional and by going first to the optional state, we're able to bypass this letter in our generated finite state machine. And finally, the question mark. This will correspond to either having zero or one of the previous letters. To achieve this, we will add all of the outputs from the finite state associated with the letter to the list of outputs that are to be connected later. We will then return our newly created state. This will enable our finite state machine to either completely bypass this letter or look for a single instance of it. Let's go ahead and modify our parse function to take advantage of our new factor function. We'll go ahead and run a couple simple test cases and show how now our regular expression syntax is able to generate finite state machines that can match either one or more of an occurrence or zero or more of an occurrence or have a letter even be optional. We have one more critical operator that we need to add, and that is the vertical bar. The vertical bar will allow us to choose between several possible sequences when looking for a match. To achieve this, we will write a brand new function. At the beginning of this function, we will immediately create a new state. We will start to parse our regular expression syntax looking for terminals. Each time we find one, we will add an empty transition from this brand new state to the start state associated with the terminal. As long as the next character is a vertical bar, we will keep reading terminals and keep making connections to this brand new state. This brand new state, along with all of these empty connections to all these possibilities, will allow the automatically generated finite state machine to choose between several possible sequences when making a match. With our basic syntax complete, we are now able to automatically generate finite state machines that can match fairly complex patterns. This concludes our video for today. In our next video, we'll be looking to add a range operator in such a way that instead of matching a single letter, we'll be looking to match a range of letters. If you want, go ahead and subscribe to be notified when the next video is posted. And thanks again for watching.